Hello and welcome to my channel Mexico La Carte. My name is Paul and I am glad you are with me today. In today's episode we'll continue exploring the town of Tlaquepaque but this time we're gonna see it through the eyes of the people that live and work here. Come on! the workshop of Rodo and Paco Padilla. In the previous video we explored the gallery of Rodo Padilla and now we are visiting their workshop where they create their most amazing work. The workshop we are entering is an inheritance that the family has held for five generations. Rodo and Paco grew up and played in this courtyard while their parents and grandparents worked with the oven and clay. In this workshop we find the pieces of Paco Padilla whose focus is more on the home use, such as plates and mugs. From time to time, he also makes decorative pieces, such as tiles and sculptures. Born in 1952 in Tlaquepaque, Paco has been a fervent promoter of his native town through his pieces and through his music. Yes, he is a musician as well. He graduated from the University of Guadalajara with a chemical engineering degree in 1974, and in that same year, he won the Song Festival of the Iteso University. After that festival, he got a job at the state company of Pemex, and on one of his trips to Mexico City, he meets the singer Guadalupe Pineda, who helps him start his musical career, and he joins a group named La Propuesta to sing at the venues and bars. In 1977, he transfers to Europe to study a specialization in thermodynamics to improve his ceramic work and returns to Mexico City in 1978. And knowing of his return, radio stations invite him to sing live. Paco's workshop is one of the best examples as to why this town is magical. And it's also the best place, or one of the best places, where our ceramic and musical traditions remain alive. Now, let's head to the cultural center of El Refugio. We have arrived to the cultural center of El Refugio. Let's go inside and check out what they have. The story of this building begins in 1859 when the duty is given to Fray Luis Arguello Bernal to design, sponsor, and construct a hospital named El Refugio, or Josefina House of Health. Once the town dwellers heard about the building, many of the aristocracy in Guadalajara donated for this building to be constructed like most of them had their summer homes in Tlaquepaque. The building has a neoclassical colonial design and architecture and has a total floor span of 10,000 square meters with 90 rooms and 8 gardens. The hospital had a good run of 120 years until it was closed in 1979 and was left abandoned. In 1983, the building was purchased by the city of Tlaquepaque and restored by architect Alejandro Son, who also designed and built the Libertad Market in Guadalajara. It is now a cultural center for the city and businesses to showcase the work of the residents of the area. Like any old building in this city, this place is haunted, but not by bad spirits, but by nuns who used to be the caretakers. Some people have reported hearing the voice of children playing and people crying in pain. Others have reported sightings of nuns walking through the hallways or leading them inside the room. The stories are endless. Despite the reports and history, it is an amazing place to come, visit, and discover. Another great thing about this complex is that next door we can visit the Ceramic Museum of Pantaleon Panduro, which houses the best ceramic works of art from around the country. Let's check it out. We 
have reached the Museum of Pantaleon Panduro, where all the award-winning ceramic pieces are housed here for our enjoyment. This museum is named after the beloved son of Tlaquepaque, Pantaleon Panduro, whose real name is Pantaleon de la Trinidad Panduro Casillas. Born on the 27th of July of 1847, he came from an indigenous family and never went to school, so he did not know how to read or write, and while he was growing up, his parents taught him the art of ceramics. He worked on that for all of his life and was an excellent artist, especially with the portraits in bust of clay of people that he saw every day. This gained him popularity and had people waiting to see how, in 30 minutes, he would capture their image into clay. With this speed, he gained the nickname, The Wizard. He was so great in his craft that when the president of Mexico, Porfirio Diaz, visited the city, they invited Pantaleon. At the welcoming party of the president, Pantaleon began to work on the bust of his image, and when he finished, word got to the ear of Porfirio and asked him how much was the piece. It is registered that Pantaleon did not want any money, but one simple and humble request, to be the president of Mexico. Porfirio accepted and he gave the powers of the presidency to Pantaleon for one hour as a form of payment for his work. If you want to see the bust of Porfirio that Pantaleon made, you have to go to the Hotel Geneve in Mexico City. What an amazing place and the story of Pantaleon is inspiring as well. Something to leave you wondering. Now we're going to head to the candy factory of Tlaquepaque and discover how the best eggnog of the country is made, as well as other traditional Mexican sweets. Let's check out what's inside. In this place, we can find four rooms that showcase the best sweets of the region and country. This is the chocolate workshop of Christina Taylor, and here we can see them making chocolate buttons for the traditional Mexican hot chocolate. Their cocoa bean is sourced from Tabasco and Chiapas, where the best chocolate in Mexico is found, and they also show you how to roast it and prepare it. Delicious and it opens up an appetite by just looking at it. In this workshop we find ingredients and toasting of almond and peanut marzipan plus an explanation of how they are made. They also have cocada which is a coconut and milk custard that is baked and then flambéed with sugar cane liqueur and roasted at the top. In this room they make the best eggnog in the country. It is made with vanilla, milk, eggs, sugarcane alcohol, cinnamon, and macadamia nuts, as well as other ingredients from the owner's family recipe. As you enter the room, you can smell the combination of all of these ingredients and marry in a beautiful dance of flavors. The process only takes three hours for the cooking and two more hours for the cooling of the bottles. Once they have reached the correct temperature, they know it's ready when they hit the top of the bottle and make a bouncing noise. Interesting process, but does it pass the taste test? Let's find out. Mmm, oh my god. Delicious. Now I know why it's the best eggnog in the city, and even in the country. We have now entered the room where Dulce de Leche, or as the locals call it, Cajeta, is housed. In this room, they do not make Cajeta, as it needs a lot of space and four people to make it. The brand that they showcase in this area is Cajeta's Lugo, and their factory is in the town of Sayula, 
which is two hours south of Guadalajara. They make cajeta in the traditional way by using copper dippers, cow's milk, sugar, and vanilla. They also have the Guinness World Record for making the biggest cajeta. At the end of your visit, you can stop at their store and shop for the sweets that you saw being prepared. We at Mexico La Carte highly recommend this factory. Now that I got my own bottle of rompope, we're gonna head to the next place we're visiting today, which is a restaurant, and it is my personal favorite. And in my point of view, it is the best in Black Apache. It's a one restaurant and gallery. You can find it by the sign that is above the door. Let's go ahead inside. The story of this place begins when Beto and Danny start selling dinner plates in the garage of their parents' house. They are very passionate about food and they felt that their creative cooking techniques were going to be suppressed in a regular restaurant. So when they started at the garage, they hit success early on and then began to look for places where they could have more formal dining and showcase their dishes. After months of looking for places to settle, they found the place they currently operate, which is not far from the main downtown block of Tlaquepaque. Their type of cuisine is Mexican with a contemporary twist, bringing all the flavors that our cuisine offers. In order to reach these amazing flavors, they use a philosophy of zero kilometer sourcing, meaning that all of their produce is locally grown and traded so the wealth is shared with the town that they have their restaurant. They take pride in their cuisine, roots, and the ageless tradition of our cooking and offer elevated dishes for our palates. It is one of the best restaurants in Tlaquepaque for sure. This place is definitely worth visiting and having lunch here. You have to try it. Great places in Tlaquepaque that are filled with history, loved for their craft, and are flavorful. Join me next week as we explore more of family-owned businesses where we can enjoy their food and their work. See you later! In the next video, we'll explore the colorful tile workshop of the Cantu family, devour delicious ice cream, and enjoy an amazing artisanal tequila. If you find this interesting, please subscribe and together we'll discover the best spots in Mexico.